Whew. Part two and part one was amazing. Let's get into part three and we'll see what we got. Press start, let the adventures unfold. Retro game set. Whew, did another change there, Vern. Moving on, we've got us Streets of Rage. This is Streets of Rage one or two player. I have, there's actually two variants of this. There's Streets of Rage. Is it Streets of Rage or is it two? Streets of Rage two and three um, might have been one, but I know I, there's different variants and I have the different variants. So regardless, this is going away. It doesn't even have the manual, but it's okay. It's in decent shape, should bring some money. Moving on, another game that I have in the collection, Home Alone 2. Look at that. Uh, this one is rough. Look at that. There's a chunk out of the cardboard, or I'm sorry, out of the artwork, out of the plastic, right down to the, the actual hard case plastic. Uh, look at Home Alone screaming, just like Macaulay Culkin did. But it is complete. And um, yeah, it'll be going off to somebody else. Another really fun game that I remember playing as a kid, The Jungle Book. Because remember, as I told you, when I was a kid, I was a Sega kid. I grew up with the Nintendo NES, and my parents bought me the Sega Genesis. So, because uh, remember, Sega does what Nintendo don't. What Nintendo don't. Remember those commercials? Uh, anyways, let's hop back to this camera here. You can see it has a garbage sticker, garbage sticker, garbage sticker, no manual. I don't know how much this thing's really going to go for because, quite honestly, it is missing the manual. And at that point, if it's missing the manual, um, I don't think it's going to kill the value, obviously, but these stickers are definitely not good. So I don't know if this is like a $15 game, but with the condition, probably $10 game, uh, maybe less. I don't know. Another game that I had as a kid that I absolutely adored, and as soon as I had gotten my Sega Genesis, I wanted to rebuy this game. This game is Jungle Strike. This is the sequel to Desert Strike. Now, I had never played Desert Strike, and the other one that you saw a minute ago, Urban Strike, I never played that either. But Jungle Strike, I remember sitting in my bedroom as a kid for hours, and I remember just having the radio on, listening to, uh, I was big into, I've always been big into all kinds of music, Specifically, for whatever reason, I remember playing this with a lot of country music. I don't know why uh, that comes to mind so much, but I did. Uh, and that's okay, because I like country music. I like all kinds of music. Country, I listen to Metallica, you name it, I've got it. Beethoven from Soundtracks, uh, Coolio, Skilo, it makes no difference. I listen to it all. But that said, this particular game... Uh, let's hop over to this other thing here. This one is also the cardboard variant. If you remember what I said a minute ago, when you see the cardboard variant, look at that. It's a half size cart. Uh, and uh, there's your manual back there. The insert is not the greatest. This right here obviously is wrinkled. And I'm really, really thinking I'm gonna keep this just because this was one of those games that I loved as a kid. And although I already have the cardboard, or the cardboard, the hard plastic case, I do not have the cardboard variant. And why not have it? How much could I really get for it? 10, $15 maybe? Um, I mean, it's in overall decent shape, but I think I'd add this to my collection because I like it. So we're going to keep that one. Moving on, we got NHL 95. Here is, is this, did I hit record on this? I hope I did. There we go. NHL 95, this one is not in the greatest shapes. Uh, there is plastic uh, taped all over it, but it does have the manual. It has the cart. Um, if this, maybe the cart or the uh, manual will be an upgrade to mine, who knows? We'll see. Star Trek. We've got Star Trek, the next generation. Um, this one has a cardboard variant uh, manual, and this is really gross. This, I don't know why this is, that's going to have to be cleaned. That's gnarly. Um, it's got like a layer of like dirt on it. Anyways. Uh, I've never played it, but I know you get to play as, um, I, I think we had this running in the background on one of my previous videos. Uh, but anyways, everything's in good shape, so I don't know if that'll be an upgrade to the one I have, but we'll find out. Here we have Trash, I mean NBA Live 95. I remember playing this, which was another one of those games that I was like, I don't know why I bought it, but I actually had a lot of fun playing it, uh, because I've never been a big sports game player. 
and uh, but I remember playing this a lot, like NHL ninety uh, NHL ninety four. Another one I'm definitely keeping for the collection is Awesome Possum by Tengen. Um, this one it definitely needs a box upgrade. The artwork is not in the best of conditions. You can see some sudden fading here. Um, so at some point this will be another upgrade because this is not collector quality. And I'm not saying my collection is full of collector quality stuff, but this one, this is like just a play kind of game that you would give to your kids. Um, and so it is what it is. Um, speaking of games you give to your kids, Aladdin, because let's face it, Aladdin was no joke. Aladdin was like the Lion King game. It had parts in there where the, uh, Video game companies were like, listen, you guys remember the video game, The Lion King? We're going to digress. Lion King. I haven't seen it yet. I don't know if it's in here or not. Lion King was specifically made to mess with us as kids because they didn't like that we could go to the video game store or the movie store, whatever it is, Mr. Video and Birch Run, where I grew up at. And they didn't like the fact that I could go there, find a game, take it home, play it for the weekend and then beat it and bring it back and never ever buy it. So they figured they'd make it hard. Remember that scene in there where the uh, Simba got thrown all over the place by the giraffes and you had to memorize the pattern? Ooh, and then on top of it, you couldn't save your progress? Kids today will never know our pain. Aladdin, Aladdin's a lot of fun. Has a broken corner, it's in good shape. I flipped Aladdin a hundred times. Adios amigo. Another one that I have never played, but I'm pretty sure is in my collection already, is Fatal Labyrinth. Fatal Labyrinth is, um, I hope it's not Fatal, and I hope it's not a Labyrinth of Mazes, but I feel like it might be. This has got, like, food on it. That's gnarly. Um, Darkness will consume the world unless the Holy Goblet is taken from the dragon's vile talons. Ooh, that was violent. Moving on there, oh, look at that, NHL 94. The best of all hockey games. I don't care what anybody says, this does not have the manual, this has some kind of advertisement for the four-way adapter. Because if I'm not mistaken, this is right here, you can play up to four people. Um, you just need that wonderful little adapter. This is, again, this is the, the, the game to get if you wanna have a lot of fun with friends and relived the days of the 90s with some hockey. Mortal Kombat. Who doesn't love Mortal Kombat? This is Mortal Kombat. That new stuff that we're playing today, Mortal Kombat 1, 11, 12, whatever these new numbers are, I don't know why these people do that. Mortal Kombat 1, I think is, I think is what it is. This is Mortal Kombat 1. Anyways, this is in very good shape overall. Has the manual. Has the cart, nothing gross. Uh, it's in good shape. And uh, I remember wanting this game so badly, um, but this was the game that was the defining moment in video game history where they were like, listen, you can't have blood. You can't do this, you can't do that. All these people flipped out. I wanted it, my neighbor had it. I went I over to his house, I remember playing it, and we had a ton of fun. I asked for it for Christmas and I got Eternal Champions. Now, was I jaded? Yeah, I was a little upset, but I love Eternal Champions. Eternal Champions is a lot of fun. If you've never played it, you gotta play it. Moving on from Mortal Kombat 1, we have Mortal Kombat 2. In my opinion, the best of the Mortal Kombat games on the Sega Genesis. I do know that once you get past the Genesis, Mortal Kombat 3 Ultimate, I think it is, has like everybody in it. Think of it like another DLC. Um, anyways, let's flip to this camera here. We got Mortal Kombat 2. This is in good shape. This game, the reason I loved it is the one... Ooh, wow, hello. Uh, that has seen some better days. Yo! She's a rough one. Um, the uh, Mortal Kombat 2 has Baraka. Who remembers Baraka? Baraka was the my favorite guy because he reminded me of Wolverine. Had those big, long spikes that would come out of his hand. He'd go... Chow, 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 like that. NBA Jam. This is the tournament edition. I was watching Gaming Off the Grid just the other day, and they said something about there's like a variant. Like there's some player that's, I don't know, maybe if it was just hearsay or whatever. Anyways, this is really interesting because this one not only has the manual, as you can see here, which is in great shade, it also has this, and I've never seen this. Interesting, a little slip. I'm definitely keeping this thing because I want to see what this is all about. 
and we're gonna pop this in at some point and check it out. And who knows, maybe this is a uh, better copy than mine, but either way, NBA Jam Tournament Edition. Moving on, we've got Golden Axe. Golden Axe, my next door neighbor, Mark. Uh, he got me hooked on Golden Axe. I remember playing it because he had a Sega as well. Whew, what a fun, fun game. I have played through Golden Axe so many times. Um, I usually like playing as this like dwarf dude over here. Uh, he had that like, he'd like run and like jump at you with your shoulder. Uh, top you up on top of the head with his battle axe. Uh, okay, moving on from there, we've got General Chaos. I'm pretty sure this one is not in my collection, uh, so this one should be a keeper. Never played it before. Uh, it is complete, and uh, the manual is a little, you know, a little bent up in the corner there, but it's okay. Um, so, anyways, that's one that should be staying in the collection. Another one that will stay in the collection I don't have: Fatal Fury 2. Fatal Fury 2. Look at that. I remember playing Fatal Fury before because this is another fighting game. It's like a Street Fighter. Uh, very fun game case and all that's in good shape. Here's the manual. Uh, here's the cart. Everything just in really good shape. So I'm very pleased with that. One I'm not pleased with, but I don't know how I'm feeling about it because I did a little research on it. I don't understand why it has value, but it does. It's Mega Man The Willy Wars. This time it's war. And I'm gonna show you here, as soon as I pulled it out of the box, I'm like, okay, that's fake. And you can tell it's fake because the artwork is just trash. Um, it looks like somebody printed it out of their home eco tank printer or like a old inkjet printer of some kind. But regardless, then I opened it up and I was like, Bleh! look at that. That sticker is peeling at the top. The sticker is not even properly laid on there. It's got a red tab on it. It's missing the manual. Um, but I did a little bit of research and I looked it up on eBay and there's one seller that continuously sells this thing on eBay religiously for $36. Um, I don't understand why this game has that value to it. It's got to be just because it's Mega Man, right? That got to be the reason why. I mean, I don't know why, but I'm on the fence about it. If it had the manual, I'd probably keep it just because it has some value to it for some weird reason, even though to me, homebrews don't, but eh, whatever. Probably still sell it. It's missing the manual. Another one we're already having a collection for sure is Mercs. This is a game about mercenaries. Uh, terrorists have the job and yours is to crush them all. Uh, it is CIB. Uh, and I know I have it, but I don't know actually if mine has the manual because I do know that um, mine was cart only when I got it. It came in a huge lot on eBay that I had bought for like $500. I bought like had a Genesis and like 40 games and there were some good ones in there. Like the value was like $1,200 and for $500 I got it all. So I was super stoked. Anyways, let's do another reset. For some more games we're back i love this i feel just like ernest know what i mean Vern? anyways this is going to be the last cutscene for this entire thing for the sega genesis i might go over the consoles in a different one of the videos where there's like like the 32x for example i'm just going to spill the beans there's only six games that would be a very short video so i'll probably go over all the consoles um that uh you know at that time maybe maybe i won't i don't no, I'm just so torn. Anyways, this video is crazy long. Let's not keep it waiting. Next up, we got, I've never been able to pronounce this, The Forever Man. It's Shocking, I think it is. Um, this is not in the greatest of shape. It's like got some ripples to it, um, but it is complete. The manual's ripped. I think you can see right here, if you look, that and that. Something probably got wet, and when they opened it up, it just ripped it right away so chalkin i think i have it if i don't obviously i'm going to keep this until i can get a label upgrade manual upgrade a whole thing upgrade from there we got kid chameleon another one i don't have in my collection so we're now adding kid chameleon 100 plus levels 1850 plus screens Ooh, she's missing the manual 
we'll have to figure that out one day down the road as well with another upgrade of some kind. Another one I don't have in my collection is the Justice League Task Force. This one already feels heavy enough that it definitely has the manual inside and boom, there she is, all in good shape. Definitely excited to play this one. This one looks a lot like another Street Fighter kind of game just with Superman and such. And one that um, got some balls. This game really is uh, fighting at its ballsiest. <laughs> oh, but this game has seen some days. Look at that trash. Wow. I mean, I, I don't... I don't get it. Definitely was a rental store. You can see right here, you'll be charged $10 if the instruction booklet is not returned. So, you know, fine, whatever. This is obviously a rental case. Oh my goodness. It is absolutely sun faded. It is garbage. That will probably be included with the Genesis when I sell it. Speaking of games that will probably be included with the Genesis, Echo the Dolphin. Echo the Dolphin's a fun game. I've always enjoyed it. The Angry Video Game Nerd absolutely despised it, but I don't think there's much that he actually did like because that was just part of his character. He might have actually liked it, uh, James. Who knows? Uh, but it's missing the manual. And I can tell you mine is substantially nicer than that dusty thing. Moving on from there, we have Death Duel. Look at the cover on that thing. Let's go over to this camera. Look at that thing. You got a robot, looks like a gorilla, just, just stone cold killer lasering right at this face of some kind of like, what is that? Like a, it's got like a, a sail, big, these teeth look like it's off one of those anglers. This looks like it's off of like one of the, like a lizard of some kind. I mean, it's like a hodgepodge creature. The searing hiss of metal breaks the silence of dawn. Okay. A whole new meaning to disarm your enemy. But it is complete. Sad thing is, I'm 99% sure I already have it in my collection. Speaking of games I know I got in my collection that my neighbor also got me hooked on, Altered Beast. If you have never played Altered Beast, get a Genesis, get a Master System. It's on both of them. Um, get one of the collaborations. Heck, if you got a Switch uh, or a PlayStation 4, it might have been on as well, the Sega Genesis Collection, it's on there. Altered Beast is one of those classics that you just have to play. I loved this game so much. Um, just a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. But again, mine is substantially nicer. Sega Classics. Uh, this is, on this camera, you got Arnold, Arnold Palmer Tournament Golf. So the Sega Genesis, uh, when it sold so many, um, or a game became so old, maybe they, maybe it's what it was, like, I remember my um, copy of Golden Axe. My copy of Golden Axe when I was a kid was a Sega Classics game because it was so far along in its life. Look at the condition, it's beautiful. Also, I like this when Genesis had done, Sega was still doing this. They didn't change anything inside. They did a new artwork and they packaged it with this. Why are you gotta be so fancy like Nintendo? Why is everything gotta be player's choice? Why do you have to go through and slap stuff? Or Xbox, they made all their um, games that sold so many or whatever it was, everything went to Platinum Edition and everything had Platinum on it and it was a stupid. The game I don't have that I will be keeping is called Arrow Flash and this is by uh, Renovation. Now if you don't know Renovation, they were a developer back in the day um, and this one is complete right here. Um, I bought a game by Renovation uh, off of eBay as a, uh, around Christmas time I got a really good deal on it. It was, um, oh my gosh, El, El Viento. El Viento is a very pricey game. I uh, got it for like half the price. I was very happy. Great condition. Um, first level is super fun. After the first level, I think I feel like they just gave up on life, right? Like they were like, oh, we put all of our energy and effort into the first level. Let's just go ahead and go eh, through the rest of the game. This one could be the same way. I don't know but it's staying in my collection. Another one that is staying in my collection is Aqua, the Aqua, the Aquatic Games um, by James Pond or starring James Pond, which is funny because if you've played James Pond, it's a play on James Bond. Anyways, um, 
it looks like I might need to do a cart uh, a case replacement because that's broken there. Uh, but it doesn't have the manual, so I will have to deal with that at some point down the road. Uh, what else we have here? This is one I already have in my collection. Mickey's Castle of Illusion. Um, over on this camera here, you can see right here, good old Mickey Mouse. This is a fun game. I remember I've already played a little bit of it eons ago, probably a couple years ago when I bought it. This one's CIB. So I'm very excited about that. Talking about the Mortal Kombat game that I said a minute ago that I was like, my parents ended up getting me Eternal Champions. I am very grateful to have had the opportunity because I will tell you, wow, this one is in very good condition. Um, the cart, eh, definitely needs to be cleaned up, but overall the manual might be better than my manual. Um, but this is a fun, fun, fun game. I definitely don't want, I don't sleep on it, you know what I mean? Uh, I wish there was some... I wish there was some store displays for Eternal Champions, and there probably is out there in personal hand, uh, hands of personal collectors and people that are like, I'll sell it to you, but I want one million dollars. Moving on, another one that I already know I have in my collection, Evander Holyfield Boxing. I remember playing uh, a bunch of this game. Uh, this one is CIB, and I believe I already have it. If I don't, obviously, same thing I said with all these other ones. Um, but this is a really, really fun game. I remember playing it a lot. All the game that started it all, I already have it, but it's called Desert Strike. Um, this is where everything went in sequel to Desert Strike, went to Jungle Strike, went to Urban Strike, and so on and so forth. Wow, that's in there. Upside down. And uh, so anyways, so there's that Desert Strike in good shape. Somebody will enjoy that. Uh, moving on, we got some trash. NBA Live 96 um, has no manual, and it is gross. So who knows how much that'll be worth? Probably not much. Another one that's probably not worth more than about five bucks at very best on a sunny day with uh, with a free can of Coke to go with it. You have NFL Football 94. Uh, it is CIB, and it's in pretty decent shape, but I already have it in my collection. One that I already know I have in my collection that I love, board game Clue. Clue is one of those games that uh, is a staple in every house. My copy of Clue, I think I actually have both the cardboard and the non-cardboard variant. And one of my two copies of Clue, I'm pretty sure, is sealed. So, But this is in good shape. Um, I'm very pleased overall with so many of these Genesis games now that I've taken the time to look at them. Obviously, seeing things like that's not great, but not for me. I'm selling it off. Moving on from there, our next and second to last is whew, Bulls versus Lakers and the NBA playoffs. Got ourselves another sports game here, ladies and gentlemen. Bulls versus Lakers and the NBA playoffs. Uh, I don't know if I've ever played it, but I'm 99.99% .99 sure I have it. Finishing things out with the last game that is in this collection of Sega Genesis, and I don't have this one. Buck Rogers. This is actually, it says, Buck Rogers Countdown to Doomsday, a science fiction role-playing game. And, ooh, let me tell you, this thing is heavy. Look at this. Look at that. Such a condition. And the reason it's so heavy, and I'm going to show you here. First off, look at that. You have all your, your crap in there. Look at all this fun stuff here. This is a poster. Oh, snap. Look at that. Look at that. Look, 1-900-288 hints. Don't call two 900 numbers. You got Sport E-A-S-N, whatever that is. Uh, down here, and if you guys get this or not, you got Strategy, uh, like Populous. I have that. Centurion. Blockout, I don't have. Um, Lakers, Celtics, Hockey, PGA. Most of those I think I have. F-22 Interceptor, that's another one that's a, uh, that's like the Desert Strike games. Uh, over here we got Shadow of the Beast, Fatal Rewind. I don't think I have either of those. Here's the James Pond ones I was telling you about right there. James Pond, Bukadin, uh, Battle Squadron, Marble Madness. Here's another James Pond, Road Rash. And then we got Starflight. I bought that off Retro Rick. Uh, Immortals I have, Might and Magic, Sword I don't have, this is Buck Rogers, and then Ring of Power, so a lot of strategy games. So this is really cool to have this, but this is the reason why right here. Look at this owner's manual. It is a gold dang book. I mean, it, uh, they're all books, obviously, but like, 
Here's page one. It starts right there. Doesn't even give you the first page as a page count. I mean, it's literally just nothing. Page one, so really there's a page as well. And your last page that it counts at least, oh my gosh, where's the last count page? It doesn't even count all the pages in here. There's your last count page, 84. Look at this, top secret Neo documents for your eyes only. Hello, let's share it with the internet. What in the world? Buck Rogers. Anyways, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. I had a lot of fun doing it, and I got to dress up in my favorite character from the time period. Ernest scared stupid. Ernest goes to school. Ernest saves Christmas. And so many other Ernest movies. Love me some Ernest uh, and Vern. And um, yeah. So anyways, I'll see you guys right here next time on Jeremy Rewind. From my